Hello, everybody. Welcome to the city of Tokyo. This is Shinjuku, one of the very famous neighborhoods、uh, here in Tokyo that a lot of people like to stay in. They like to stay here because it's so vibrant. There's the Shinjuku main post office right there, telling you that we are exactly in Shinjuku. There's the government building right there, the Metropolitan Building, that's、uh, very famous. Beautiful view of the city of Tokyo up there. And in this live stream, I wanted to talk to you about where is the best area in the city of Tokyo to stay, to eat, to visit, to be. How you doing, everybody?、Uh, before I start, I want to get something at the vending machine. I am absolutely dehydrating. It's so hot here. Summer seems to have started today. The sun is out. And、uh, I don't know. I need your help here. What do you think looks good? The varieties are endless. I might just get water. <laughs> I like to just get water.、Uh, what is this? Icy Spark. It's a, one of these weird new Coca Cola drinks. Nihon Coca Cola. A very strong. See, you know what? I like this, but they put sugar in it, though. That's what I found. They put sugar in it. So I can't, I can't get that. Like, why would you put sugar in carbonated water? So I'm going to get this Mount Fuji water because I like Mount Fuji. All right, I have 8,000 yen left. Good old Mount Fuji water. Can't go wrong with that. I see Irvin's in the house. Are we going to Map Camera? Actually, Irvin, I went to Map Camera and I sold my S5, Panasonic S5 with the 20 to 60 millimeter lens and a、um, Sigma lens, 20 to,、uh, 24 to, to 70, right there at Map Camera. That's why I started right at this. Irvin knows me well. Well, Irvin, this is in the house. Hi, John. Let me be your beverage supporter today. You got it, Michael. I'll see if I can find something better than, than、uh, um, sugary carbonated water. That's where I was today.、Uh, on the fifth floor is where you can sell things. And it, they asked me to wait for an hour up there on the fifth floor, come back in an hour. So I figured I might as well do a, a live stream and talk about this because、uh, I've been getting asked a lot where's the best place to stay? Let's go over this in pieces, okay? Where's the best place to stay in Tokyo? And if you're watching this, this is 2021. We're in the middle of a pandemic. That's why I have a mask on. Masks are required everywhere in Tokyo. Check it out. It's like masks. Can't get around it. NLS, thank you very much. Welcome. I see Shane is here matching, <laughs> matching the, the three amigos. How you doing, Shane? All right, so I want to start with where do you stay? Now, Shinjuku is one of the top destinations to stay.、Um, another one is Shibuya.、Uh, another one is Asakusa. Some people are staying more and more in Ginza as well, Yorakucho area. Those are all really vibrant places. Shinjuku is, is really popular because、um, it has a wide range of accommodations that are both cheap, like capsule hotels,、uh, under, under $30 a, a, a night, which is really good for this area. But it's also,、um, it can get really pricey up to $1,000 a night in some of the, the really pricey hotels. That, what is it?、Um, the,、um, uh, park, the Park Tower Hotel and the, the Hilton, and there's a couple of other hotels where, where the sky is the limit. Some international chains are here. And it is a very vibrant place. This is West Shinjuku. The thing is with Shinjuku, it's not just one area of the city. This is a massive part. This is a massive place. There are tons of places to eat here. A lot of them are at night,、uh, very vibrant. And if you want lunch, you don't have to look very far to find a very decent bowl of ramen. These are all、um, oh, about、uh, all over $5, a little pricey for a bowl of ramen. That one's got like some, some deep fried,、um, what is it, deep fried chicken on there? Wow. It's good. But you don't have to travel food for,、uh, far for food, entertainment, hotels, the train station. Everything is pretty central here in Shinjuku. It's crowded, it's vibrant,、um, there's a lot of energy here, and this is a, the choice for a lot of people.、Um, it's not so central, though. If you want to get to、uh, Asakusa or Ginza or Akihabara, that's across town. But you can jump on the Yamanote line and get there pretty quickly. That's something. That's something to, to keep in mind when you are staying in Tokyo.、Um, where are you located on the Yamanote line? I think you, if you come here in the corner, we'll be okay. Where are you located in the Yamanote line?、Uh, is, 
where are you located in the city that allows you to travel from place to place? Uh, Ginza and Yurakucho is a little bit more central because you are not that far away from Asakusa, which is the cultural home of Tokyo. You're not that far away from Shinjuku, Shibuya. It's all within, I don't know, like 30 minutes. Everything is less than 30 minutes on the train. From Shinjuku, you might have to travel a little bit further to get to these locations. Shinjuku is pretty close to Harajuku and Shibuya um, and Ikebukuro. So that also makes Shinjuku a pretty ideal place. But if you want to go to the airport, Shinjuku is maybe the most inconvenient. Maybe Ikebukuro might be a little bit more inconvenient of the places. Pesa writes and he likes Shinjuku. It's not just because the, the Hilton is nearby. <laughs> it's also because you can also shop for a lot of electronics. This is the Yodabashi camera um, main uh, headquarters. They have a bigger one in Akihabara, which we saw the other day. But Shinjuku's got it all, man. And that, that's another reason why I think it's, it's a good choice. Personally, though, I prefer Asakusa or Asaksa, depending on if you're a pronunciation snob. Uh, Asakusa is the way that you would say it for foreign tourists uh, on the train. Yeah, Asakusa, I like staying there because it is very cultural, very traditional, and it's quiet at night. It's a place where you can find um, uh, a lot more traditional izakaya. Food is, uh, um, I don't know, not meant for businessmen or tourists. It's, it's more of a place where you would go out and, and have traditional Japanese style. Uh, kai, um, uh, kai seki ryori or something like that. You can feel the history in Asakusa, and that, that's what makes it really special. But the hotels there are quieter, and I, I don't know if that's something that you want to consider because it is very loud here. Depending on where, where your hotel is, you could have a lot of street noise uh, in Shinjuku, especially at that capsule hotel. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I, I probably will never be staying in a capsule hotel anymore. I'm done with them unless it's a last resort. But. Uh, they can be quite loud in Shinjuku, and not just just on the street, but also because it's so crowded, there's a lot of people. Asakusa is, is at uh, almost the other side, right? So if you have a family, that might be a better option because walking the streets at night, it's so quiet and so peaceful, that might be the ticket for a lot of people. Shibuya is, I wouldn't say Shibuya is, is a, a great place to stay, but people are going to disagree with me. It just depends on what you want. Shibuya is also a very vibrant place, but I think it's a little dirty. So is Shinjuku, but I, I think there's less options in Sh uh, Shibuya than there are in Shinjuku. So if you're going to stay on this side of the city, I think that Shinjuku would be a better option. Um, Ikebukuro is a good, a good option too. If, if you've stayed in all the other places, Ikebukuro is nice because um, it's, got, it, it's, it's got more university students in that area. So it's got a different feel. Things are cheaper in Ikebukuro. There's a lot more one-coin restaurants. There's a lot more, um, I don't know, things geared towards university students. And you get that through the, the vibe of that area. Uh, Ikebukuro is a pretty big station. That's a uh, Seiba department store. It used to be the biggest in the world. For eating? Boy, that's a tough one. Like. Again, like Shinjuku's got the food, it's got the shopping, it's got the entertainment, it's got the rail networks really close by. So I would say for your first trip to Japan, Shinjuku would probably, Shinjuku or Asakusa would be the, the two best choices. The third choice would be um, uh, the Yodakucho Ginza area, just because I, I think it's very central. There's a lot of things to do in Ginza, and I, that's my backyard, so I know it quite well, but there's a lot of history there. Uh, Yurakucho is a new area. There's a lot of restaurants underneath the Yamanote line. There's a lot of places to uh, um, explore that has a different vibe than everywhere else. And Ginza is this really cool balance between the, the uh, energy of Shinjuku and that traditional uh, um, feeling of Japan that it, it's also more quiet in this. It, it's quieter in the streets in, of Ginza. So I would put that on your list as maybe number three. Uh, up and coming places. And we're walking around. I'm, I'm going to walk back towards the um, Odakyu and the Keio uh, Shinjuku station. I'm also walking around to see what businesses have gone out of business. There's the game center that the Taito game center is gone. I started off this live stream by looking in that direction. Up and coming places uh, include Ryogoku, which is not that far away from Asakusa. And, and also um, right around the uh, Tokyo Sky Tree. This is, these are areas in Shitamachi that have a really cool vibe to it. Um, Yogoku is where sumo wrestling is based. So there's the sumo stadium, the sumo arena, 
and there's also the Edo Museum, but it's a little bit far away from places. However, the Ryogoku neighborhood is very traditional and you're going to find some very interesting restaurants to eat that are different. A lot of them are based, um, there's even a couple, I believe there's more than one that have a sumo ring inside of the restaurant. So that might be a place to stay if you have a family. You're going to have to get on the train line. It's connected with JR, which is uh, uh, one, one, two stops, Askusabashi, then Akihabara, two stops to uh, Akihabara from Ryogoku. Uh, it's also on the Oedo line, which is like the Yamanote line. It'll take you around the city of Tokyo. So you, can, you don't have to change trains to get to Shinjuku from Ryogoku. So that's a good place that you might want to stay if the hotel is a little bit cheaper. Um, it, it's, it's a possibility. And then there's also the places up in, up in uh, the north of Tokyo, Katashikaku. It's very traditional. Um, those areas have, they still have ryokan. You can feel the history up there. And it's, uh, and it's a lot cheaper. But again, you're quite far from the center of Tokyo. So you have to consider what exactly is, do you want to get out of your trip? Where you stay is a big deal because then you just walk outside your door and you're, you're here. You're in Shinjuku West where there's this many gachapon, which is insane, right? That's kind of crazy. So what do you, what do you think here? I, I want to hear from you. Uh, Spike021 writes in here, had the most amazing sukiyaki at a shop last year right near where you are, John. Family, family owned and an older lady serving, taking orders, gave me and other patrons homemade fabric sakura, uh, sakura pins. That is awesome. That's what I like about, even in Shinjuku, you can find uh, family-run businesses here. Another good thing about Shinjuku is that it is quite used to tourism. We're going to walk here, take a look at some of these gachapon. Tourism, uh, since 2013, uh, 14, 15, it was a totally different city. Tokyo was a different city. There, there weren't a lot of Western tourists. Everybody was coming from China. And, and still, yesterday I introduced more than 50% of the tourists come from China, Korea. So Western tourists speaking English wasn't a really big deal until about, I don't know, six years ago. Since then, a lot of people in the city of Tokyo, especially here in Shinjuku, can speak English because they're used to Western tourists. There's just some weird... Why would you get the Easter Island Moai in, in yoga positions? Why would you do that? It's the, it's the craziness of Gachapon that makes you love them so much, right? Oh, flip phones! Oh, this is the first, that's the first flip phone that I had. The Docomo um, uh, 502 IT Hyper. What? That's so awesome. That's exact color too. Whoa. If you're up for coffee, Blue Bottle Coffee is at the bottom of Shinjuku Station. I always go there on every trip, right? It's in peso or, you know, gotcha money. Let's see what we can do. I'm actually into this one. I remember this one, this Sharp TV. This is the first TV, one seg TV that would pick up TV signals and you could flip the phone to the side to make it look like a, a widescreen TV. This is the, no, this is the first, the first video phone that I have, the, the uh, Docomo 900 IV. It turns sideways and this is the record button and you could put an SD card in here and record video. I use this all the time. I still got these, this phone and this phone, I still have them. All right, I'm getting this. This is too nostalgic. These are all from the uh, 2001, 2002. What? I'm like, whoa, nostalgia city. It's bizarre. I got 300 yen here. You know what's gonna happen? You hang out here, this song sticks in your head. It's worse than that popcorn song. You'll never get it out of your head. All right, I'm going for nostalgia. I don't, don't ask me why. There is no why with Gachapon. You just do it. All right, peso, thanks, but this isn't probably what you wanted. <laughs> Give me my phone back. Oh, it's so small. Kabu um, Scare Meister writes in here, Kabuki Cho is the best. Again, you can't, you cannot deny the fact that um, Shinjuku has entertainment on so many different levels. Ah! 
This is this is my first phone in Japan. Uh, 19. Uh, 1999 or 2000, I got this phone. It was the first color flip phone. I gotta try, I wanna get that 900 IV. I'll try again later. This is so cool. So I have a mini version. I'll take a picture, put it on Instagram. Whoa, this is so weird. All right, I'm, I'm happy now. I have a mini version of a phone that I bought 20 years ago. That's crazy. Doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Carlos writes in Leo's first phone. Yeah. <laughs> this might be too small where he might eat it. Why do they got these retro Nissan cars in here? That makes no sense. I love it. God, I could drain so much money here. Nasha Broad has animals peeing and, and pooing. Got to look for, for something there. And I think I promised some, somebody some uh, Demon Slayer stuff too. I'll take a look here. I got to go back and get my stuff from Map Camera Urban, so... Look, it even has the battery right there. I had an extra battery because it wouldn't last. That's pretty cool. Does it open? It opens! No way! I used to do the Captain Kirk. Whoa! That is so awesome. Don't tell me the antenna extends. Okay, it doesn't do that. It doesn't work. Who wrote that? That's so cool. It's got the Docomo Foma logo. Bizarre. Saya M. Shinjuku has the best tapachka food. That's debatable. Well, that's debatable. And Queen of Tacos, hi John. We have a trip planned for October. A hotel is in Kabukicho. Do you think it will be safe in that area? Queen of Tacos, it will be safe in that area. I don't think you're going to be going, well, I don't think you're going to be, I, I always say be a little bit suspect after, um, after about 11 o'clock. Between 11 p.m. And, and 2 a.m., weird stuff seem, tend to happen outside in Kabukicho, but it's it's perfectly safe. I would say about five years ago, it, it wasn't as safe as it is today. Kabukicho is, is such a vibrant area. It's it's become fun and more touristy, but you should definitely, if, if, you're, if your hotel is there, no complaints. You're going to love it, and I think October should be just fine for travel. I'm pretty excited. I'm excited to hear that. <laughs> well, gotcha, pawn. Nostalgia is one way to get people my age to, to dump some money. Carlos writes in here, why be out after 11 p.m. unless you're going to a club? That's true. They've got a lot of them, but you might be, you might be coming back from another area to your hotel. The thing is, I think if, if, you, if you have a lot of things and attractions you want to do in Kabuki Cho, that's a, that's a reason to stay there. The reason why I like Asakusa is because at night, it's so cool to walk the streets there. But if you walk there at night, you have to take the, the train back to your hotel. So it just depends, like, you have to think, what do you want? If you're looking for more cultural stuff, you might want to stay in Asakusa. If you're looking for more, I don't know, that feeling of, of pop Japan, I would say maybe, you know, Shinjuku is good. Akihabara is not on my list of places to stay. Unless you specifically have something in mind that you want to buy, like figures or you want to, to visit a lot of maid cafes, Akihabara is not on my list of places to stay. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that there's, there's some good stuff there, but it, it lacks the restaurants. Ueno is a far better choice. But then again, even Ueno, I would put that in my, maybe like 10th in my top 10. Yanaka, Tom Servo uh, has it in there. Yanaka is a wonderful place, but just keep in mind it is a little bit far from the other areas. But it, again, like it depends on what you're looking for. Yanaka's got a lot of really cool um, old restaurants, a lot of places, definitely family run. You won't find a lot of chains in there, but you'll also feel old Tokyo there. But you really have to stay there to, to absorb it. The thing is, a lot of places will close early in the Yanaka area up in the up in the, the northern part of Tokyo. But that's that's a wonderful place to stay. Uh, Wilfred writes in here, Ikebakuro is the best area to stay. I'm not going to debate that. That's a that is definitely in the top five. But um, yeah, I, I think I think um, 
for your first trip, I wouldn't pick Ikebukuro. I would pick either Shinjuku or I would pick、uh, Asakusa. And third would be Yurakucho because it's just so central. You have the JR line, it's close to Tokyo Station. It's easy to get to the airports from Yurakucho. A lot of these businesses have not popped back up. This was something else, was it? Now it's a, in, like in, it's called an Aladdin, which is a pachinko place. This, was, this is new. This was not here last, a couple of months ago when I was walking around the streets of Western Shinju, West Shinjuku. Now, within Shinjuku, and this is the. Hey, Wisdom is here. You think November from Canada is fine for tourists? I believe so. I, I, it's really hard to say. That's right, John is back in town. You got that right. John is going to have a mask tan. It's going to be white here and then brown from, from above. <laughs> it's going to freak out my son. Look like a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, now here, here's where it gets difficult, okay? I just told you that maybe Shinjuku is the best place, but you, you also within Shinjuku have maybe half a dozen areas that you can stay in, which makes it even compl com more com complex. This is West Shinjuku, and this would be the playground of West Shinjuku. These are、um, low rise buildings, a place that they're starting with a redevelopment. Uh, in a couple of years, maybe some of these businesses will be gone, but you have a pretty cool view. It is definitely lively until 1, 1 a.m.、Uh, West Shinjuku is a nice place, but I would say Shinjuku Sanchome might be a more interesting,、uh, more interesting place to stay. That is between Shinjuku Station and Kabukicho. A lot of shops there. Um, it's very close to the Yamanote line. It's close to the Toei Shinjuku line and the Oedo line, which is another circle line around there. You can't go wrong with the Shinjuku Sanchome、um, or Kabukicho for that matter.、They're, it's just a very convenient location. There's a soba shop right there, standing only. Whoa, steak place. I can smell it on the street. Ramen and steak, look at that. In lights. That's Shinjuku. Do you see these lights going around it? Food is like a movie, all right? Food is like entertainment here. That's Shinjuku. So you do have that vibe. If you're going out, if you're, if you're under the age of. It also could be a case of, of how old you are, too, right? My tastes in places have, have changed over the years. When I moved to Tokyo in 2004 for the first time, I, I lived out in the countryside for the first six years. When I moved to Tokyo in 2004, I liked going to Shibuya. I liked, I used to live in Futako Tamagawa. I would take the train 10 minutes to Shibuya, and I loved that area. I liked that vibe around Hachiko, and it would be easy to make friends with people. But nowadays, I try to avoid Harajuku. I try to avoid Shinjuku and, and、uh, Shibuya just because I want to I get away from the people. Kumamon's eating some ramen. Yeah. So,、uh, again, it just depends also maybe if you want that quiet place, you're going to stay up in, in Asakusa or Yanaka or even Ueno. Might be a little bit quieter. Ueno is a compromise between the, the, the powerful and energetic Shinjuku Shibuya Harajuku area, Ikibukuro. Ueno is, is、uh, on the Yamanote line, and I believe it's, on, it's very easy to get to Narita Airport. Asakusa is also very convenient for Narita Airport, too. Here's the Taito Game Center that's out of business. You can see they pulled the signs down. It's kind of sad. It's got kind of a, like a Six Flags、uh, like、Frontierland kind of look to it, doesn't it? Interesting. Nosha Broad writes in here. Yotsuya is a pretty short walk from Shinjuku and right next to、uh, Arakicho. Really enjoyed the more local experiences and little restaurants, but not far from, from the, the busy,、uh, bustling city areas, too. Nosh is absolutely right.、Um, Arakicho is a under the radar era,、uh, area.、Uh, if you have your pencils or pens right now and, you're, and you have a, like a Lonely Planet or guidebook that you're using,、uh, pencil in uh, uh, Arakicho. It is a, a neighborhood that I actually introduced on Only in Japan Go、um, with Tada, Tadaima Japan. I don't know if there's still Tadaima Japan. Nice people over there.、Uh, 
Um, they have a guest house in that area and wanted to highlight the Arakichi area. I was impressed. It is so, it's such a unique neighborhood because when you look at the big city that is Shinjuku, you're, you're only a couple of stops on the subway or, or a 30 minute walk to Arakichi. That is a really quiet place to stay and still be uh, in the center of all of the, uh, the city. So I would put that on my map too. That's the Yotsuya and Arakicho area, which is about two stops um, uh, a little bit inwards uh, towards the Imperial Palace, I believe. Yeah, from Shinjuku, Shin, uh, uh, Shinjuku Sancho Mei, then Yotsuya would be the next stop. Yeah, Ichi. Uh, uh, wow, there's a lot of, lot of names in my mind here. Yotsuya and uh, Ichigaya is also another place. A lot of universities in the Ichigaya area. So that, that center, quieter, um, a little bit more traditional but somewhat separated from the bustle, which is not a bad thing if that's where you want to stay. But if it's your first time in Japan, it's pretty cool to exit your hotel and you're like right here with all the neon lights and the buzz and the ramen shops, right? That's pretty exciting. Wasim writes in here, I'm going to Grids Asakusa Bas uh, Bashi for my first trip. Asakusa Bashi is a wonderful place. That is right between Ryogoku and Asakusa pretty much. So Asakusa Bashi is a wonderful place and it's, it's walking distance to Akihabara. But I think Asakusa Bashi also has a Showa feel to it. Oh, I'm glad that you brought that place up. A Showa feel to it. So it feels like you're in the 1960s, like trapped in 1960s. Some of the shops there are, um, look at that Ajitama on there. Whoa, that big piece of chashu steak popping out. This is Ichiryu Ramen. Very nice. Gosh, I'm gonna have to do a ramen live stream. I do have a ramen episode coming on the main channel uh, in the next three episodes I'm editing right now. Whoa, look at this set, check it out. You get a chow han and a ramen set for under nine, uh, under a thousand yen. That is a really good deal. N not ramen, r ramen. <laughs> Raw men would be just raw noodles. Yeah. It's raw noodles. LT, love it. From Hong Kong, keep it up. Oh man, I am melting right now. I'm melting. So for the next couple of minutes, I want to take some of your questions directly um, about where are the best places to stay. On our Discord server, on our Discord server, we actually have, I, I believe we have an accommodation place where you can discuss uh, where is a good place to stay. And I want to, when I travel around Japan again, attack, I, I'm getting hungry because I want to attack lunch. Uh, attack uh, like Osaka's places to stay, Kyoto's places to stay, Kanazawa, Hiroshima, um, and kind of look at the areas within and, and some of the hotels that I've stayed at or you stayed at. We can debate this in the Discord server and we have, uh, almost 13,000 members in there trading uh, stories and experiences that will definitely help you. If you have a question, ask in our Discord server about accommodations and, and uh, there will be, I'm sure that there's somebody who has stayed in one of those hotels that has pictures and, and uh, honest reviews that you can trust. At least that's my hope for the Discord server. Nagoya John's here! Hoping the ramen empire stays strong. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Nagoya John. Angel Forever 59X. All the food looks delicious there. It looks delicious right where I'm standing. I just, like, I'm looking at this gyoza. Man, it's spicy gyoza. Oh, getting hungry. This smells right now wafting my direction. Insane. So the, the question is, um, me to you, are there any good brunch places nearby? That's a tough one. Brunch? A lot of restaurants open at 11. I would just call it lunch. If you want brunch, like like breakfast stuff, there's this restaurant called Eggs and Things and the Hawaii restaurants are quite popular here. There's some Hawaiian-based pancake places that you'll find. Um, what's what's one of the, Bill's is a chain. I don't know if that's Australian or what. There's a like a chain of pancake restaurants. You can find a lot of them around here. But if you're staying in Japan at a hotel, I would say get the breakfast. Unless you don't need to eat a lot, then you could just get like a, like a scone at, at Starbucks or something or something from the convenience store. Yeah, Bill's is Australian. A lot of, a lot of uh, my Japanese friends like to go to Bill's, but then when I see the check, it's like, how did a, a stack of pancakes cost $30? I don't... It's, it's Australian. 
Kanai and the baby are doing well. Um, Leo's getting bigger and bigger, and uh, Kanai um, is, is doing well. She's doing well. Denny's is still there, so is Royal, Royal, uh, Royal Host. These are all places that are open through the night. So if you need a place to stay after you go clubbing or something and you're waiting for the last tra the first train in the morning, I usually will jump into Denny's or Royal's Ho Royal Hosts or Jonathan's. That's how I survive. They're everywhere. Um, I used to live out in Edogawa, Edogawa so a taxi would have cost uh, like over $100. So I would just hole up in a Denny's or something and enjoy the drink bar. Hey, Arnold B74, lunch. Thank you. Can I, can I take that? Uh, do you mind if I just take that back uh, to Kanai then? <laughs> I'll get something to go then. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Um, when I, Uber is kind of new and Uber, all right, that's a good question. This is something to consider in where you stay. A lot of people survive on Uber traveling around Japan. Uber in Japan is not that strong. I, at least from my research and my own use, Uber was only Uber Black. And Uber Black because um, Uber could not compete against the Japanese taxi industry and, and lobbying and government interest really made it hard for Uber. It's an episode that I'd love to produce, but they only had Uber Black, which is a premium. And it was 30% more than normal taxis, the Uber Black. They were white gloved uh, men in suits that came in larger vehicles to take uh, people and a lot of Westerners would use them. It was perfect for a lot of luggage. So no, no complaints. Uh, my dad, uh, when he, my family, when they visited from the U.S., we, they, he used Uber. And it was just easy to get on the app. It was something that he knew, but he paid a premium, 30% more for the Uber Blacks. But the drivers could speak English, and they were very friendly and gave peace of mind. So there were some advantages to that. But just keep in mind that if you do use Uber in Japan, um, as far as I know, unless it's changed, it was just Uber Black. Yeah, D-Mob's in the house. Have a cool beer. Oh, man. You have no idea how hot I am. Uh, Arnold, I will take lunch home to my wife. Thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate that very much. Warren Von Toronto's in the house. Are there a lot of... Uh, uh, let's not say that word. <laughs> but it is kid. Every I wouldn't say that there's no place that's kid-friendly, except that you don't take your kids around at 1 a.m., okay? Just don't do that. And it, you should be fine. Hey, look, they got a Coca-Cola truck. Wow. Even the boxes are small. Yeah, so the... Um, every place is kid-friendly. Just, just don't hang around with your... Like 1 a.m. in Shinjuku with your kids, okay? That doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that in any city, right? <laughs> let's go let's go to the Bronx and hang out with our... With, get the baby stroller out and walk around the Bronx at 1.30 in the morning. Like, why would you do that? Jet lag is another issue. If you do have jet lag, Shinjuku is a place that's open all night. And Shibuya, too. So if, if you're coming from uh, the West, that might be something in, you want to consider. However... I think going for morning walks at like three or four in the morning around Askusa might be safer, and it, it does. It definitely has a, a very surreal feeling to it. Nobody around in the summer. The sun comes up at four or at four fifteen, so it's even weirder. So you have that going on there. This is the old uh, Taito Game Center that went out of business. I did a live stream on that about two months ago, right before it went out of business to document it, and it's kind of sad to see it gone now. So, to sum up, to sum up, John needs to get a beer and a ramen. <laughs> but Shinjuku would be the top location that I would recommend to everybody to stay if they come to Japan. Shinjuku seems to have it all, from entertainment to location, to uh, if you're jet lagged, things for you to still do in the middle of the night. Um, uh, the, the areas, I would say Shinjuku West is pretty cool, but Shinjuku the east side around Shinjuku Sancho Mei or Kabukicho is also a pretty good option. Just keep in mind in the middle of the night, you're not gonna walk, wanna walk around Kabukicho too much, especially Friday and Saturday. There's, there are a little bit sketchy people outside, but you're probably gonna be okay. Sketchy people in Japan are like sometimes normal people <laughs> in New York, maybe. I don't know. Wasim writes in, when is the next uh, featuring with, with Paolo from Tokyo? You two are my fave. Paolo is a good friend. He also has a son around the same, in the same grade as, as Leo, and we talk often. 
Uh, I'm not sure. We both kind of, it's a good question. Ryan K for a drink of choice. Thank you. I'm kind of dehydrated here. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about, about Paolo. He's been so helpful. Um, also being a dad, he's a couple of months ahead of me, so he's got good advice. He's already been there. Um, but I don't know. Maybe we're trying to trying to hang out. We don't usually prom, uh, like publicly do stuff like that, but uh, I hung out with him in, in January, uh, him and his wife, uh, before, can I, before Leo was born, and maybe we will in a month or so um, when Leo gets just a little bit bigger and the state of emergency ends. But a uh, very good guy, and he, he's a very hardworking uh, creator. So I've got a lot of good stuff to say. Day in the life of John Dobb. <laughs> I can guarantee you it's going to be interesting. A lot of stuff going on. Might just learn something. Young buckaroo. All right, that's all I have here. Um, uh, the other place in Shinjuku is Shinjuku South, which is where the um, Microsoft building is. There's a, um, the, um, what is it? Woman place. There's a couple of restaurants on there. The South is not so good, but if you're gonna stay in South, you might as well just stay in Yotsuya, I think. Shinjuku West or Shinjuku East, probably the best. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I like meats. I like karamiso negi ramen. It's my favorite. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Check out the um, uh, check out the uh, a Discord if you're interested in more accommodation options. And new episode coming on the main channel really soon. If you haven't already, check out the Eki Ben episode where Peter and I jump on the Tohoku Shinkansen and ride up for three and a half hours eating seven Eki Ben. It's trending. I just made that up. It, it might be. It might be. It's a good video. Cool. All right. And Nosh rates in here. All right, thank you, Nosh, for the, for the update. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you in the next live stream. Mar, hello from Texas. Thanks. Thanks so much.